In this circuit, what we'd like to do is a combination of a resistor capacitor circuit and a transistor now. It turns out there's kind of a neat little combination we can make between some of the things we learned about transistors as switches and the slow voltage rise of RC circuits that actually makes kind of a fun circuit. Let's take a look. So it turns out then that uh, this is the classic RC circuit. I have a 1000 microfarad capacitor here. So see the 1000 with the mu f written on there. So you're looking for something like this in your parts box here. 1000 microfarads, look something like that on the capacitor. And the resistor I've chosen in this case here is a 100,000K, so 100,000K resistor. So it's a brown, black, and a yellow band. That's the first time we've used this resistor in this sequence here, but another one that we sort of have on the parts list. And so what we'll do is we just chose these values because the 1000 microfarads times the 100,000 ohm resistor sort of gives a time constant of roughly about a second or so. So if I just plug in the battery here, as we've seen in previous videos, we'll see the voltage slowly rise across the capacitor with that characteristic time, which is like R times C for the values that I've chosen here. So up it goes. Uh, and we saw this before in a, in a previous video here. We see the voltage rise sort of slowly and methodically there. Okay, we won't focus on that here. So what we're going to do now is suppose we recall something we remember I just discharged the capacitor to start over again. Suppose we sort of do something that we remember about transistors here. So remember as I get out the transistor here, the little three terminal element here, remember that transistors turn on when the base voltage reaches 0.6 volts. Do you remember that from a previous video here? So we ha sort of have the transistor here like this. If I draw a little symbol, the schematic like this here. Here's the collector and the emitter and the base right here. Sort of have that going. And remember, when the voltage across the base exceeded the voltage across the emitter by 0.6 volts, a current would be allowed to flow between the current and the emitter. And we're usually grounding the emitter right here. We're always putting out a ground in this video series here. So what that really tells us is that when the voltage on the base is 0.6 volts, the transistor turns on. But now look we, what, what interesting combination of stuff we have now. We have this ability now to control how quickly voltages appear. Now I just ran this one for you here. Rewind the video if you want. But we saw the voltage come up nice and slowly at this midpoint here between the resistor and the capacitor, didn't we? So you start thinking now, well, the capacitor starts at zero volts and rises very slowly. I don't know, it might have take, taken a few seconds for it to reach 0.6 volts. What happens if we connect this midpoint here directly to the base of a transistor? So what would happen in the case like that? So we put the transistor in like that. When you think about it, the transistor will essentially ignore all voltages that are delivered to it under 0.6 volts because the transistor doesn't turn on until it hits 0.6 volts. So if I take this midpoint here between the resistor and the capacitor here and connect it directly to the base of my transistor, so I just stuck it into the middle lead there, and the flat edge of the transistor is pointing that way here. So in this configuration, remember, it's collector, base, and emitter in that configuration. If I connect it like this, the transistor is just going to ignore all the voltage under 0.6 volts, but then when it hits 0.6 volts, and the timing of when it hits 0.6 volts, we're full and fully in control of because we can choose the R and the C to be anything we want. We can get an LED to turn on, but sort of with a delayed control. Kind of a nice little circuit to bring together several lessons that we've been learning. I put in this red wire here to ground the emitter. So the emitter now is going to ground, which is this, this bottom row right here. And as before, in my typical switching mode, I'm going to put in this 100 ohm resistor here to protect the LED, so the 100 ohms is going from the 9 volts to some point in the circuit. And here comes the LED. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there like this. And so what I have here is the LED is connected to this side of the 100 ohm resistor, the, the brown, black, brown, going into the first lead of the LED. The flat side of the LED is over here. In other words, the flat side is facing the transistor or closer to the transistor. And this flat lead of the LED is right on the collector of the transistor. So I've got it all wired up here. Just remember what's going on here is the transistor loves to turn on when the base voltage is six tenths of a volt or higher. But now, when that 0.6 volts appears, it's a bit slower now because I'm going to make it appear with an RC circuit. So here we go. Here's the battery. I'm going to connect it on 3, 2, 1. Let's watch the LED. So 3, 2, 1, connect. Watch the voltage rising here. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, nothing happening. 0 0.5, points, and look at that. Right around that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, 
the LED comes on. I just think this is wonderful. This is just the coolest thing here. Let's discharge that capacitor and do that again. Here we go. Here's the voltage slowly rising, but nothing happens. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, bang, right there at 0.6, between 0.6 and 0.7, the LED comes on and it kind of fades on. So we have a very nice delay circuit. We can control when that LED comes on at any time by controlling the R and the C value right there because that's the timing where the timing is, the product of R times C as we said a few times before. Notice that the, everything sort of stops, the voltage across the capacitor sort of stops at 0.7, and that's because what's happening in here is as soon as the transistor turns on, current and charge is leaking off the capacitor here and going through the base emitter part of the transistor right there, and so the capacitor is no longer able to charge up any more than that because any more charge that would build on the capacitor at that point would just go into the the base emitter side of the transistor. So it sort of stops at 0.7, but it's just a wonderful example of a time delay in electronics. And what we can, of course, as I mentioned, we can control that now. Let me reset the capacitor. I'm going to take out the 100,000 ohm resistor here, and I'll put in the 10K resistor, the brown, black, orange that we've used several times in this sequence here. I'll just replace it straight up there. Looks like I have everything right. Now let's connect it and watch what happens much faster rise there, still delayed, much faster rise and looks like it's able to stop at about 0.8 volts, much faster rise. And see, so there's the uh, a nice example of RC there and doing some things with um, these time constants there. So I just think that's a wonderful example of how all this sort of things works, RCs and transistors bringing together several constants, but we wanted to sort of close with a little bit of an issue here. This stuff is very nice. We can have these delay turn-ons, but what about this thing? This thing, of course, we discussed this in several other videos, and we did a few projects with it. This is these Arduinos here, these pro programmable computers, all on one sort of board like this, $25, very inexpensive. has all these digital outputs here, and in a few other previous videos, we actually turned some things on using the digital output. So we're at a bit of a crossroads. We don't know how to reconcile this ourselves, but we know we can put code inside the Arduino here. And in particular, we have these delays. This is some code that we used in a previous circuit here, uh, just for familiarity here. But say we did something like this, saying the loop statement right here, the very first line in the loop statement here was delay 1,000. That would cause the Arduino to start running its code, but the first thing you would encounter is a delay of one second. Remember, 1,000 milliseconds here. Then what if after that line here, I did a digital write of pin 5, to the high value like that. Okay, and say I suppose I got received, that was my my whole code, my entire bit of code inside my loop there. Just wait a second and then make pin five high. Now if pin five here on the Arduino was connected to the base of my transistor, say it was connected, you know, right in here where that center point of the RC circuit was connected, what that would mean then is that the transistor would turn on after one second. We would get the identical behavior only using the Arduino. We'd power the circuit on, the LED wouldn't come on for about a second. Same thing that we saw in our RC circuit. So what's the difference? Well, we don't really know. Like if someone gave you a job of turning the LED on one second after power was applied to it, which route would you choose? Would you use the Arduino? Or would you use the classic sort of breadboarded, little more complicated circuit here involving RCs and so on. And suppose then you built the circuit and your boss wanted you to change the delay to two seconds. In software, I would just change this one to two, recompile it, reship it, and I'm done. Here, I'd have to go choose a different R and a different C, perhaps, or whatever, to get that two-second time constant. So we're at a bit of a crossroads here. In other words, what we're saying is here, as cool as these RC circuits are, and as cool as these little examples are that show you where electron timing comes from, it's just not so clear we need it anymore because all of this can be done with the Arduino. And if you don't like the Arduino, there are smaller micro microcontrollers out there. There's ones that are much smaller that, uh, that are definitely even take up less space than this big, chunky capacitor you have on here. So we don't quite know what to do. We do like teaching and talking about the classic electronics, but this programmability of the Arduino is very hard to pass out. So it's something to think about.